Hello traders, it is August 31st, the last trading day of the month, and what an August it's been. Best August in 30 years. Typically, August is a very weak month. You know that, I've been saying it. Didn't want to trade against that seasonal trend, but the market has been grinding higher. I'm going to put up the daily chart of the S&P 500, and you can see this upward sloping trend line that comes into play at SPY 337.50. That's also this horizontal breakout right here. That is a critical support level, and I believe it could be tested in the next five to 10 days. Yes, I've been bearish for the last month since Apple announced earnings. The mega cap tech stocks announced earnings, so I was not advocating longer term swing trades. We have been trading very short term bullish put spreads. We've also been day trading the long side. So we've participated in the rally, but it has been a very light volume rally. I categorize this more as a seller's boycott. Sellers are not very active. They're hanging on to their stock. Bullish speculators are starting to pile in. And if I draw an upward sloping trend line, starting right at this high here, and I pull it across the high Right there, you can see that we have a breakout to the upside. This, in my opinion, is a bullish climax, and we could see some selling pressure over the course of the next five to 10 days. I'm also seeing a lot of stocks that have gone parabolic, tech stocks in particular. That tells me that prices are way overextended. We could see some profit taking. That doesn't mean that I am aggressively shorting right now. I'm not. I need to see this upward sloping trend line challenged and I need to see long red candles closing on their low and a penetration and a close below that upward sloping trend line before I even contemplate getting short. Until then, I'm going to assume that the market continues to trend higher. This is a 10 year bull market rally. This is a four month bull market rally. You do not pick tops, you go with the flow. But I'm cautious because I do sense that we're going to see some selling pressure here in the next week or two. So that means that my bullish put spreads are farther out of the money. They're shorter term in nature so that the accelerated time decay is kicking in. And I'm also trading smaller size. So I'm doing everything I can to control my risk and to limit my risk and to try and generate some income while the market is in that final phase. We've got big economic news this week. I have some manufacturing, I have some services, ADP, unemployment report Friday, initial jobless claims have been ticking higher. That's not a good sign. I think that could be problematic. Plus, we don't have the stimulus package. The 1.3 stimulus package has not come through Congress, and it's not likely to ahead of Labor Day. Small businesses are starting to run out of capital. They needed that PPP lifeline, and I think that you're going to start to see them laying off employees. So watch that initial jobless claims number every week. I think that could be a bad sign for the jobs report this Friday. So I do have a stock that I'm going to show you. Very easy to find. I'm going to go right into Option Stalker, and I'm going to look at my heavy buying list. I'm going to keep this video very short. AMD was a really nice stock today. You could see this move higher. This is where we caught it. Had a nice move in it, took some profits on it. I did miss that move right there, but this is setting up for a really nice bullish put spread this week. I'm going to go into the D1 chart. You could see that big horizontal breakout right there through the 8750 level. So I'm going to sneak inside of that level. My assumption is that that is one, two tests of resistance. That means that now we have a nice defined support level there since we are above it. Used to be resistance, now it's support. Similar to the Dell trade that I showed you yesterday. Last night actually in the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go very very close to expiration and I'm going to sell an option that expires this Friday. So we're going to take a look at the $86 put and we're going to look at the $85 put. And you can see that those are currently trading 95 cents bid offered at 74 cents. So that's a 21 cent bid on that spread right here. And I'll click right there. You can see it's 21 cents bid offered at 26 cents. We've been selling that spread for 25 cents today. And my premise again is that the stock will stay above $86.
And if it does over the course of the next four days, then we're going to be able to generate a 33% return. How the heck did you come up with that number? Well, there's $1 between the strike prices. That means that I have to put up $1 in margin, but I do get to apply the credit received, which was $0.25. Cents. Dollar minus $0.25 cents is $0.75. Cents. If I take the credit, that's my maximum profit potential, $0.25, cents, and divide it by $0.75, cents, I get a 33% return. Not too shabby for one week's worth of work. Where would my stop be? I'd need to see AMD close below 87.50 and start to come in. I don't want to give this a lot of room because I also don't want this upward sloping trend line right here violated. I'm going to click that low right there. I'm going to click that low right there. Now I have a GTC alert line set and it probably is going to continue to creep higher up to that $85 level within the next couple of days. That also would be a very strong technical support level, but our spread is above it. So I'm not leaning on that. I'm simply leaning on this breakout. And my assumption is that if the market stays flat this week, this stock on a nice breakout is going to continue to gradually float higher. My apologies for that. So I think that this is a really nice play. And uh, we'll take a look at a few other stocks that are coming up. CRWD also had a nice little move today, a nice little breakout. I traded that for a $1 gain earlier today. Tesla's been on fire after its uh, stock split. We can take a look at that. There's Tesla, right? Excuse me, here's CRWD. That move right there, and I'm going to put up the SPY so that you can see the relative strength. The gray line is the market, market down, 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 stock, up, up, up. Got in here, took my profits there. Tesla was another really nice example of relative strength that was coming up on our searches. You can see market right here, this is the open. Market was down, down, down on the open. Stock after split, pushing higher. Very, very nice. I took a $3 gain out of Tesla. Another good one. I'm going to continue to go down the list here. Let's see if we can spot some relative strength right now. WKHS, I made money on that. About a 30 cent winner this morning. That was nice. Very quiet market, very dull. There's really not a lot of price movement. So this is a time to be very, very cautious. Intel, I do like Intel here, and I'm going to show you why. First of all, as you know from the video that I did yesterday, uh, we had... Dell reporting super strong earnings and we were trying to get that Dell spread done this morning and we were able to on the open we were able to go into the daily chart here we were able to sell that bullish put spread keying off the 6250s so we were selling the September 18th expiration 6250 $60 bullish put spread for 45 cents we were able to get that trade done early this morning on that tiny little pullback right on the open. But the more important point that I was going to make, right there is your down open on Dell, is that Dell reported gangbuster earnings. They said that they've got a lot of people that are buying new computers because they are staying at home and working remotely, so they needed to upgrade them. I think that bodes well for Hewlett Packard. I think that also bodes well for, for Intel. So Intel has pulled back pretty dramatically and we'll go into that daily chart and you can see there was the earnings announcement the stock got absolutely pummeled but now we have this nice upward sloping trend line here and I'm going to draw that on a GTC basis because if it's violated I'd like to know about it because it might also set up a shorting opportunity but it comes into play right here at about the $49 price point so ideally we'd be able to sell something below that $49 strike and get a credit. I did take a look at it. There's not a lot of credit available. Intel is just not a wild moving stock. It's kind of a grinder. On a day trading basis, I think Intel might be the kind of stock that you can get in for the day, ride it higher. This resistance level right here, I'm going to place a GTC alert line. You can see how it drew horizontally right there at about 52.25 approximately. If the stock can get through this level, then it becomes outright bullish because it will try to fill in this gap right here. 
So I like that uh, trade also, but I like Intel right here before it gets through that resistance. I like it as a day trade moving to the upside. So watch it. Watch for that relative strength. It's a quiet grinder. Don't buy breakouts. Buy these little dips like that. And I think that Intel is going to continue to move higher. Did you see how easy that was to find? All I had to do was to go into one search within Option Stalker, and that was the heavy buying search. So that's what we've been doing. That's how we're finding a lot of our day trades. Relative strength 30, fantastic search. And I'm going to go into a five minute chart and I'll show you exactly when I would want to use it. See this market pullback right here? This is the S&P 500. On that market pullback, we had a beautiful 1OP cross here that is a bullish cross after it's troughed. So that was an excellent entry point. We had two long tails under body. So when we see this in the market, 1OP trough, bullish cross, tails under body, this is when we want to start pounding this relative strength 30 search because these stocks are strong relative to the market. And those are the ones that are going to lead the market higher. As soon as it regains its footing, they'll be off to the races. The other reason that we want to be in those is because they are strong relative to the market. They're holding their bid very strong. They are not selling off. Buyers are lined up. So if this happened to be a little head fake bounce in the market and we saw another big leg down on the S&P futures, we would lose money buying here. On these stocks with relative strength, the buyers are still there. Here's another trade that we did last week, MDT. I showed you that. Did a really nice MDT bullish put spread that will be expiring, and I was leveraging off of that 200-day moving average. That trade is also in really nice shape. So I hope that this gives you an idea of the types of trades that we're doing right now. Dull market. We've got a holiday coming up. We do have some pretty big economic news this week, so we'll get a decent little bit of volume around those economic releases, but then the action will kind of die down. It'll be another week or two until the volume really starts coming back. I'm going to be watching for profit taking. I think the market's overextended. The first clue to that will be late day selling, and that's exactly the opposite of what we've seen so far. We've seen the market open on its low, close on its high. That is very bullish. Now, if we start to see a lot of late day selling and follow through the next morning, that'll be a warning sign to start taking profits on some of our long positions and to start watching for that possible sell off that gets us down to that SPY 337.50 level. That's all I've got for you today. Keep it light, relatively quiet market so far. Watch those economic releases and the possibility for some bad news surrounding the unemployment report on Friday. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you never miss any of these videos. I'll always have some great trades in them for you. Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.